Sunday with Bukaya, just like my spirit has just been so heavy, like so, so heavy. You know, that confusion that just comes out of nowhere, that feels unbearable, that you feel like you are being buried under a pile of stuff and it's getting darker and darker and heavier and heavier to lift this thing up. Oh my goodness, if you've been feeling like that, then you'll recognize some of what I'm sharing in the story. The same next day, I had to go to work, and I just wasn't feeling up to it. I, I show up at work, and I, and I tell my team, guys, listen, I'm here to do the work, but I'm not feeling like a vibe today. Don't expect any laughter from me. Don't expect any high energy. Don't expect anything that is what you are used to seeing of me. I just don't feel it today. But here I am. Here I am at work, and that's the only step I'm going to take in that moment. Previously to that, a friend of mine had called me with a testimony, a testimony that if you follow Dr. Sylvester, you will be familiar with, where a woman who was standing in the midst of an impossible situation started praying in tongues, and and uh, the protocol bowed down to the name of Jesus, and she left with an answer that she needed in order for her to get the paperwork required for the thing that she needed to deliver. A rule that was never broken in that office was broken because she prayed in tongues, willing that the hand of God would change the situation to work in her favor. A friend of mine had phoned me to tell me that, that testimony, and I held on to it with both hands. Oh my God, oh my God, did I need that testimony yesterday when, when someone who is so close to me called me, telling me about an illness that I said, Jesus, I refuse to accept this diagnosis, not today, not after everything that I have been going through, Jesus, I will not. Jesus, I will not. I started praying in tongues. My friend had to drive me to work because I needed that 40 minutes that it takes me to leave my house, to get to work, to pray in tongues. I tell you, by the time I arrived at work and I spoke to the person that this diagnosis was concerning, the doctor had phoned them back to say, no, it is not that which we thought it was. We are treating you for asthma in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I pray that even that asthma will come to be nullified because somebody needs to hear what God is doing in our lives. In the same day, I feel myself depleted going, Lord, what is happening to the people around us, those that we love, who are losing so much in, in, in sheer volumes that we have never been able to comprehend before. When Zagantoni, God said, I will take you out of any situation, kicking and screaming if it is to save your own life. This is a revelation God gave me of a situation of someone who is in my life. But God says, John, that if it is to save your life, because my job as your father is to save your life, I will take you out of that situation, kicking and screaming, and I will reveal to you at a time when you are ready to receive it, what it is that I was doing in your life. Jesus, on the same night that I'm supposed to have Bible study, Bible study that keeps me filled up, Bible study that makes me to want to go to continue to seek God out. There were technical challenges. This had to be done. That had to be done. This was delayed. This was moved out. But even in the midst of that, God made Sylvester obedient and said, you will get on this phone and you will speak. Let me tell you that which Sylvester had to say where he was teaching about the spirit of Python. If you don't know what this is, go and look it up. Where, where a Python snake is a constrictor snake. It's not going to eat you and swallow you whole. It's going to work its way slowly up your body and get tighter and tighter and tighter until it squeezes the life out of you. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over the spirit of Python right now if that is what is attacking your life. Oh no, it will not succeed. It will not succeed because even after that, I had to go and find out what was Bishop Jake's teaching about in being converted. I tossed and I turned all of last night. I, found, I had a pain in my right shoulder that 
forced me to sit up and to pull my Bible. The same Bible that the spirit of Python was making me run away from. I pulled out my notes. I pulled out my phone. And the Holy Spirit gave me a hunger to want to know what is this teaching and how does it speak to me and how will it change my life right now. I thank God that he gave me that pain, that he gave me that restless spirit to come and hear what it is that he had to say because the accuracy with which we share what God has laid on our hearts is important. It is the difference between life and death. Someone is dependent on you to do what you have been called to do in your service, in the kingdom right now so that we may shame the devil because he is a liar. Go and listen to that teaching by Bishop Jakes Converted. The enemy has a plan for you. That's not the most important part of that message. If that's the part you take out of that message, you've missed it. The most important part of that message is the fact that God has a prayer for every plan of the enemy. God has a prayer for every plot or plan or scheme of the enemy, which means it is already nullified. Whatever is before you today that is a plot or a scheme of the enemy is already nullified by the prayer of God. I want you to decree and declare that over your life right now. Oh my God, if we are late, if we are disobedient, if we allow ourselves to be removed from the things of God, it is the difference between life and death because the enemy wants you to take your life, but not on our watch. No, no, not on our watch. We had better get fired up about the things of God. We had better get hungry to find who God is. And we, get, we better get hungry to, to discover him, to experience him for ourselves. And we must stop shying away from the things that God is doing in our lives. We want it to be a secret because God must only be God for me. No, talk about your things. Share your testimonies. Like I'm telling you now, the testimonies of those that had the boldness to speak the things that God laid on their hearts are the reason that I'm even on this live here today. Oh my God, the enemy will not have my life. No, he won't even have my thinking life. He won't have my flesh life. He won't have my spirit life. He won't have my financial life. He won't have any part of my life, not under the watch of Jesus Christ. So you better go and pull up that Bible that you've been running away from. You better go and make that prayer that you haven't been wanting to make. You better go and ask for that help that you haven't been wanting to ask for. You better wake up. It's eight o'clock on the dot. Those that know, know. Eight o'clock on the dot. Some of you are sleeping way past the alarm in your life has been ringing. The alarm has been ringing. It rings so you can wake up from your state of slumber. You keep pressing snooze. Stop pressing snooze. Get up out of the bed and do that which God has called you to do. Magnify his holy name over anything that you call a problem in your life right now. He is God. Nothing surprises him. He is the only one qualified to get us out of the mess of life. He is the only one who is qualified to get us out of the mess of life. So can you call the one who is qualified to deal with the things that you deem problems in your life? Get up. Get up and stop pressing the snooze button. Stop pressing the snooze. The kingdom needs you. Get up. Get up and do that which God has called you to do. Kaya told you, you are the perfect candidate. You are the perfect candidate for God to display his transformation power in your life. You are the perfect candidate. Jesus dying on the cross for you qualified you. You are a kingdom child. Get up. Stop pressing the snooze button of your life. Who cares if they don't like you? Doesn't matter. It won't surprise God. God knew that you will be met with resistance, but he's already made a way for you. He's already leading you. He's already ordering your steps. He's already making your name to be... The oil is in the room. We're not David. Come back. Come back to the things that God has called you for. Because David was called to be a king. You are a kingdom child. My God. 
you're not fired up right now. I, I, I don't know what will fire you up because God told me to come and tell you, bottom line, uh, the long and the short of it all is that God loves you. God loves you. Say your name. Zizo, God loves you. Say your name. Tembeka, God loves you. Mawande, God loves you. Dipo, God loves you. Elsie, God loves you. Kubanomye, TK, God loves you. Snaz, God loves you. Mrs. K. Poswa, God loves you. Vuyoletu, God loves you. Nomakuku, God loves you. Noabi, God loves you. Dr. Mamelo, God loves you. Say your name. Wake up. Stop pressing the snooze button. And don't let that liar, the devil, tell you who you are. Man, that home is a liar, man. Sis, he's a liar. We must despise, we must despise, we must despise even the smell that Satan has been in our midst. We must despise it, we must despise it, we must despise it. We must despise even the smell that Satan has been in our midst because he's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. You have the truth at your disposal. Now you go out into the world and you carry that truth because God has got your back, man. God has got your back. If you remember nothing else today, you remember that God has got your back. Even while you were a sinner, God has got your back. If God can use Peter, the same one who betrayed him, God has got your back. And that's the only truth that you need to know. Point blank period. Full stop. Draw the line. Test is over. God has got your back. I love you guys. And, and, and share this with someone who needs to hear it. Uh, I know I shouted at you, but I needed to hear it to myself too. Um, yeah, man, have, have a good day, you guys. I love you, okay?